Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Calabasas City Council meeting of June 29th, uh, 2021. This is a special meeting of the City Council. It is shortly after 6.30 p.m. And tonight, I'm joined by Mayor Pro Tem Mary Sue Maurer, Council Members Peter Kraut, David Shapiro, and Alicia Weintraub, as well as our staff. This meeting is being conducted utilizing Zoom teleconferencing, the live stream of the meeting, may be viewed on the city CTV channel three and or online at www.cityofcalabasas.com slash CTV live. If you plan to provide public comment, please press raise hand if you're joining via Zoom or star nine if you're joining via phone and star six to unmute yourself. Please state your name and the city you live in. You'll be allowed three minutes to address the city council regarding any item within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. In the event a quorum of the city council loses electrical power or suffers an internet connection outage not corrected within 15 minutes, the meeting will be adjourned. Any items noticed as public hearings will be continued to the next regularly scheduled meeting of the city council. Any other agenda items the council has not taken action on will be placed on a future agenda. The Pledge of Allegiance tonight will be led by our city clerk, Mari Hernandez. Please join me so looking at black. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Kraut? Aye. Councilmember Shapiro? Yes. Councilmember Weintraub? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Maurer? Yes. Aye. Mayor, Mayor Busaja? Aye. Carries five zero, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we're gonna go through council announcements. Um, Mary Sue, uh, I see your face up there first, go ahead. Sure, I just wanted to wish everyone a happy 4th of July. Um, it's going to be memorable the first time so many families and neighbors and friends have gotten together. And I just want to ask everyone to be extra careful with any um, fireworks uh, that you may see around. They're prohibited in the city of Calabasas, um, but it's highly uh, flammable, um, the, the, the brush surrounding us. So please be careful and enjoy yourself. Thank you. Uh, Peter? Uh, I have no announcements tonight, James. David? Just a uh, follow-up, a happy Independence Day celebration to everybody, and we look forward to celebrating in person as, as we have not done in a couple of years. Um, and while we're celebrating Independence, uh, just a reminder, LA County Health has somewhat reversed their uh, view due to the variants of COVID out there and the spread and potential risk. So they're asking and urging everyone to wear masks indoors and businesses, groceries, movies, et cetera, uh, especially if you have not been inoculated. Just be safe and enjoy the holiday weekend. Um, and Alicia. Just on the COVID front, even though we have a high vaccination rate, we are not the highest in the country and we still have more residents who are eligible that can get vaccinated right now for six, our population 16 plus, we are at 73.9%. So we still have a ways to go. The great news is for our 65 plus population, we're at 97.3, which is one of the highest in the county. So we have work to do on the 16 plus population. Um, our best defense against COVID and especially the new Delta variant is vaccination. So if you can and are able to, please take advantage of the many local places providing the vaccine. Thank you and have a wonderful 4th of July. Great, thank you. Okay, We're, uh, I have a couple announcements. Our 4th of July fireworks spectacular is coming up, of course. We're glad to bring it back. And uh, we have a concert start uh, starting the evening at 6 p.m. The gates are open, there'll be the concert and then the fireworks show. So I did wanna say that tickets, you have to have a ticket to get in. It's at Calabasas High School. Um, we are sold out, correct, Kendon? 
So, Mayor, I think we are sold out. We did have some tickets that went unclaimed and those went on sale yesterday, but I think they sold out. So I, I haven't confirmed that, but I, I'm expecting everything is sold at this point. Okay, so to maintain safety, let's make sure that if you don't have a ticket that you don't just show up because we won't be able to admit you. We are unfortunately, although we were able to bring the event back, we had significant limitations as to numbers of tickets for the public safety and welfare. And we hope you'll help us by not, um, you know, by not pushing the envelope and coming without a ticket. So um, I also wanna remind everybody that we have our summer concert series starting. Uh, at Calabasas Lake. They start at 6 p.m. Uh, and they're free of charge. You would enter by entering the Tennis and Swim Center parking lot and going through the gate to the lake. It's right by Lakeside. On July 18th, Stone Soul, August 8th, Yachty by Nature, and August 29th, Cash Killer and King. Those are the three concerts. They're all free of charge. You don't need a ticket. You don't need to RSVP. Uh, I mention all this in part because we are taking our traditional summer recess, and that's going to, uh, tonight will be the last meet and meeting we anticipate having until August 11th, when we'll be resuming. August 11th, we will be having another virtual meeting. However, on that night, we will be discussing the future of our meetings and how we will, they will be held. Are we still on tap to do that, Kendon, that night? That is correct, Mayor. Okay. So in the interim, if you have suggestions, uh, I know things are constantly changing, please let us know. At this point, um, with no further public comments, or no, excuse me, no further communications uh, from the council, we'll turn to oral communications and public comment. If you have a uh, public comment on an unagendized item, raise your hand. This is not for any of the agenda items. So if anybody is raising their hand for an agenda item, we'll get to you at the appropriate time, but this is for something not on the agenda. I don't see any hands, so let me turn to the city clerk. Mari, has anyone called in on an unagendized item? No, Mr. Mayor, no one has called. We have no um, hands up either. Okay, so we're going to move on to our first item of new business, which is a recommendation to approve an expenditure plan for monies received from the American Rescue Plan Act's Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund. This will be presented by our city manager, Kendon Meek, and Ron Allers, our CFO. Go ahead, gentlemen. Mayor, thank you. Uh, council members, it's good to be with you, and we appreciate you taking time for a special meeting. This was a, a, you know, at the request of uh, staff several weeks ago. We we requested that the city council uh, take a pause and look at the stimulant, stimulus monies as a whole and some of the different possibilities or ways that we could uh, expend those to the benefit of our community. So this meeting uh, is an effort to accomplish this. Um, uh, staff wants to um, upfront let council be aware that uh, we've presented some ideas. And these are just ideas really to start the discussion. Uh, the council can look at, you know, what has been suggested and make recommendations and changes to amounts. Uh, some of the items could be removed from the list and others could be added. Uh, but what we want to do is uh, create some parameters going forward so that uh, council and staff can work uh, cohesively on the best use of these funds. The, the, the American Rescue Plan Act was signed in, Mar on, in March of 2020 and uh, the allocation to the city of Calabasas initially was about $4.4 million. And just, just within the last few weeks, we received wonderful news that that allotment uh, was increased about 26%. So from 4.4 million to 5.7 million. Uh, we will receive these monies in two different um, installments, one each fiscal year. So the upcoming fiscal year beginning July 1, and then again, uh, sometime next July and July, 2022. Uh, with that, we'll uh, receive almost equal distributions of those payments. So roughly about 2.8 million per fiscal year. And we have until December of 2024 to uh, use these monies. So uh, the plan that we'll discuss today is not concrete. This is something that can change based on the, the decisions of the council. Uh, as we continue through these different expenditure years, we may find that something that is a priority right now 
uh, takes a, a backseat to something that is more prevalent or more important in the next few months as, as different things come up. But again, what we're trying to do is create a framework uh, for the council to be able to prioritize these stimulus monies and to then be able to put those to the best use. Uh, council members, I do wanna go over the categories and give some uh, background on those as well. The Department of the Treasury outlined several different areas of, uh, and ways that these funds can be spent. Uh, first is in support of public health. Uh, some of these expenditures or examples include uh, vaccines and, and pro, or vaccine programs, PPA, PPEs, medical expenses, a lot of which has already been covered. So again, the stimulus monies could be used for that, but we've seen other funding aid sources or private entities have come and uh, done some of these as well. Uh, behavioral health and care needs, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on. This is mental health and substance abuse treatment, crisis intervention, um, and services to the homeless. And we'll talk about that as, as one of our line items. Uh, also under these expenditure or payroll benefits, uh, these are to uh, primarily to those workers um, in the public safety and public health um, professions which we don't have. So these would be police or county health workers that may have been serving and working on the front line. Um, and stimulus monies can go back and pay for payroll expenses, benefits and other costs for those employees. Under the next item, uh, address the negative economic impacts caused by the pandemic. Again, some varied um, uses or eligible expenses. Uh, one is to uh, enhance and promote the travel and tourism hospitality industry. Uh, that was specifically called out in the stimulus package, um, uh, finding ways for the safe resumption of those um, activities of the tourism travel industry, and also promoting that. Uh, rebuilding public sector capacity. Uh, this is one of our line items, and we'll come back and talk about that, but in, in rebuilding public sector capacity, the stimulus um, or the, the legislation refers to lost payroll benefits or um, rehiring public sector staff that was uh, either lost or not filled because of the pandemic. Another item under the, this negative impact is small business support. And these are loans and grants and in-kind assistance to different uh, businesses. Also uh, with the idea of uh, um, continuity and operation or uh, continuity of operations uh, to prevent closure, to mitigate uh, um, closure and things like that of small businesses. And then there's also a category for hardest hit communities. And this is in uh, ways to invest in socioeconomic disparities and uh, disparities in education. Um, next category uh, looks at uh, replacing lost public sector revenue this would be a, a means by which the city could look at those uh, traditional revenues that were lost during the pandemic, uh, transient occupancy tax, uh, could be in some cities, uh, sales tax. Uh, we, in Calabasas, we have lost revenues because of our uh, uh, membership dues to the tennis and swim center, also, um, membership uh, cost for the senior center. So anything, any of those type of uh, uh, um, payments that were suspended during the pandemic, those lost revenues can be recovered. Uh, additionally, there's a premium pay, and this is for those who are directly affected by the pandemic. We've talked about this in previous meetings. Uh, this has to do with uh, workers at food production facilities, grocery stores, restaurants, janitors, uh, truck drivers, and warehouse workers, a broad category, uh, just looking at the, the, the premium pay for those. And that can be used retroactively as we've talked, and we will discuss that a little bit more. And then uh, finally, the, the last um, category that is uh, identified in the stimulus fund is the investment in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Uh, with the Calabasas not operating its own water or wastewater system, this limits us to an extent, but we do have the flexibility of using when it indicates water and sewer, it also captures stormwater or storm drainage uh, um, uh, infrastructure. And so we do have, we have identified a couple projects there. And then broadband infrastructure is also identified as part of the legislation. 
So that, that gives some general overview of uh, the, the cost and I've gone through that quickly. So council, I'm going to pause just briefly before I go into the tables and give you time to um, ask some questions about those different categories. Actually, I think what we'll do is I want to take the public comment first because I know we're going to have extensive comments and questions mixed in. Okay. Do you want um, me to, Mayor, do you want me to review the table first or do you want to wait for public comment on that? No, I think you should review the table so that the public gets a full report and then you guys will stand by and be able to answer the public's questions once they're, if they have any come up. But, but I think going through the whole report would be helpful. Okay, so let me pause there. So the information that I presented so far, this is uh, from uh, the Government Finance uh, Officers Association. This is their summary of the legislation. The League of California Cities also has a, a wonderful resource for cities as we've looked at this. And then our, <clears throat> excuse me, our city attorney has been uh, really valuable in his analysis of not only the legislation, but uh, the, the legal framework for, for which we can operate. So before I go onto the table, uh, council members, is there any of those items that you'd like me to review and or do you have any specific questions on this? I saw Mary Sue's hand up, but I was going to go through the whole report first and then, uh, you know, then the, then the public comment. But if you had a question you wanted to ask about, by all means. I just have a quick procedural question. Yeah. Um, Kindon, is this all an oral narrative or do we have slides with these uh, categories and the areas that fall under them because it would be nice to refer back to them or, or is this an oral presentation? This was set up as an oral presentation. Um, what I can do is um, modify, uh, I, I could, if you'd like me to, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, I could try to share my screen and just go through a couple of those slides that I was reviewing from the GFOA presentation. I think that would be helpful for the viewers. Okay, so, um, let me see. I think I'll need assistance on sharing screen. Didn't mean to put you in the Zoom spot there. That's okay. This will be the real test. Okay, so I'm going to share this. And there, good. Well, that's so, great. All right, so council, I'm hoping you're seeing the GFOA Are you able to see the entire presentation there? Yeah, it's going by quick. Okay, I'm not going to, so this is 38 slides. No, we, not we're not going to do 38 slides. Let me, let me scroll down to the ones that we were just looking at. Okay, so again, just a summary of eligible expenditures and let me go. So those are categories, they list it in these four different categories. And I'm gonna go through these uh, just slow and so council members, please stop me at any time, just if you want to look at these slides in a, a little bit more detail. So looking at COVID-19 expenditures, um, this is where we can look at uh, vaccines, enhancing public health data systems, mental health crisis intervention, um, payroll for workers and in public health and public safety. So I'm going to pause on that one a little bit. And once council has had a chance to look at that, just let me know and I'll move, move, move through that next slide. I think we're going to have to go a little quicker on this thing. Yeah, so are we okay to proceed? There's a lot of air time that is dead, and I don't, I don't want to do that too yeah. much. Because some of the public can't, I, I imagine, can't see this too well. Right. So or you again, know, what? you could even, you could even just some, maybe Mari or someone could just email that to everyone, and then we can be looking at it during our discussion okay, just to have it. That. So Mari, I'll send it to you. I would okay. I wouldn't mind just quickly going through it one last time if you if there's just a few more slides the list we're at hardest hit communities we're almost done 
I'm, I'm intrigued by the, um, the uh, tourism. And um, so that's something I, I definitely would like to learn more about. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go through these mm -hmm. fairly briefly, just to go through. So negative economic impact. Um, uh, you've mentioned Mary Sue, the tourism and travel hospitality, rebuilding public sector capacity. Um, this would be in the city's case, recapturing those lost revenues, small business support. We've talked about that loans, grants, and so forth. And then hardest hit communities investing in um, or addressing disparities in education, investing in socioeconomic disparities. The premium pay, this would be for those uh, who work in diff different industries. This can be done through grants um, uh, to the entities themselves or straight to the essential workers. And I won't go through this. This is, this is the GFOA's calculation of how to recover uh, lost revenues. And then the summary on water, sewer, and infrastructure. Again, this ties it back to um, uh, some requirements by the state here in California with uh, clean water revolving fund and the drinking water state revolving fund is aligned with those uses. And then broadband infrastructure is the idea to uh, build up modern technologies uh, and also uh, assisting households with internet access and digital literacy on those as well. So council, I'm gonna um, stop the share. I'm gonna go back to the Zoom. I'll review the table. And then when, um, when we go into the public comment, I'll share the, the slides with the council. Any specific questions on those before I go into the table and the summary? Could the broadband include radio communications or AM radio station for emergencies in particular? It, it doesn't look like it, Mayor Pro Tem, but we'd have to look into that a little bit more. So let me I just, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, everyone should have the PowerPoint in your inboxes. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Madi, for doing that. So let me review the table. So we've, as staff, we've put together uh, possible allocations for these stimulus funds. And again, as I mentioned, this is more than anything for the council to begin a discussion and create a framework or some parameters for staff as we move forward. Uh, foremost, uh, we're, we are requesting that council uh, think first of those lost revenues to uh, the city. Uh, these revenues, um, in essence, are funds that we took from our piggy bank from general fund reserves to offset the cost of operations during the pandemic. And it also includes um, revenues going forward that will be lost. For example, this year we're projecting lower than normal transit occupancy taxes. Um, we're not sure where we're going to be next year with those as well. So again, we have four years to recover lost revenues. And so uh, right now we're, we're suggesting that uh, at least 2 million of the 5.7 be set aside and put back into the, the general fund reserves. Once it's put back into the general fund reserves, it gives us a lot more flexibility. So uh, some of the questions that council members asked, for example, was what about parks or what about uh, other uh, community amenities? Those aren't covered under the stimulus, but once that money goes back into the reserves, we are free to use that on normal operating expenses, normal expenditures of the city. Uh, we are estimating low on this, uh, and Ron and I went back and forth on this. We really think that uh, our lost revenues could exceed $2 million, but we put in a number just as a placeholder there. Uh, item number two, the Agora Hills Community Center, uh, Agora Hills Calabasas Community Center. We've set aside or suggested that the council uh, set aside $2.25 million to repair the roof, uh, the, replace the air conditioning units and look at any other facility or maintenance repair. Uh, again, this is an unknown to us. 
this one might be on the high end. We're just not sure. And so again, uh, this uh, serves as a placeholder for that. Uh, the idea behind putting it in the stimulus is it creates a way to, for the city to use these funds without dipping into general fund uh, monies uh, to, uh, to repair the facility. I have listed also the contribution to the Calabasas Chamber of Commerce for 50,000. This is the money that was already approved. So that's, that's money that council authorized uh, by resolution at our last meeting. The next four items fall under the water and wastewater and storm drain um, infrastructure projects. These are um, a catch basin at uh, the Creekside facility. This would be at the drive approach there. A culvert repair at Headwaters Corner, a sewer line installation and connection at Headwaters Corner, and then also a sewer line installation connection at Great Barber Park. So again, just uh, those last four cover fall within the infrastructure categories. Down below, we've listed uh, several different um, other options that we'd like the council to consider. Uh, and again, all of these can be changed and numbers can be increased, decreased, uh, items can be excluded and new items brought in just based on uh, the preference of the council and the consensus. Hazard and hero pay for Calabasas grocery workers, we've put in 167,000. Small business support, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with uh, ways to uh, assist um, uh, our local businesses. Uh, as part of our conversation in previous meetings, uh, the, the Corcoran, I'm sorry, the Calabasas Chamber of Commerce uh, requested 200,000. There was a, a, a recommendation that 150,000 be allocated. Uh, I have listed here 500,000. This is not 500,000 going to the Chamber of Commerce. This is 500,000 that could be used in any way uh, that we saw fit to support local businesses. This could be through economic development. It could be through rent subsidies. It could be through business incubator programs. Uh, a lot of this could be done in partnership with the, the Chamber of Commerce. At our last meeting, the, the council was very clear that they wanted to work with the Chamber of Commerce on filling some of our vacant storefronts. Uh, and so we've added some extra funds in there. Um, I don't know if it's really fair to, to Bridget in the chamber to expect her as a, a single individual to try to carry that load of uh, filling our storefronts and bringing in tenants. And so this gives us um, a way to partner through either a consulting firm or some other uh, practices to fill our businesses uh, throughout the community. The Calabasas Film Festival has uh, sent a letter to the council requesting $100,000. We've put a placeholder in for services and support to unhoused individuals. These would be uh, working in our initiatives with the homeless population in our community. And this could be done in different ways. Again, we'd like to explore this more with the council of looking at uh, increasing um, the, the use of somebody like Gabriel that is very adept and very talented in working with the homeless. This might be uh, uh, finding beds for homeless, which is one of the deficiencies that we have is not being able to provide beds and other services. And so this would allow us to partner with some other outside entities and organizations to do that. Uh, rebuilding public sector capacity. This would be um, monies that could go back to the city to cover either um, uh, benefits uh, that employees lost. It could be used to hire uh, positions that were lost during the pandemic. And then finally, the last one, upgrade our TV master channel. This would be in our communications room uh, in the council chambers and also the cameras, robotics. We could also use it for some of the sound system and so forth, uh, especially as we move forward, looking at using Zoom and other technologies to broadcast our council meetings uh, to a wider audience. So again, council, these are recommendations and suggestions. We, we request guidance from the, the council. What you have before you is supersedes the 5.7 million in, in, in allocations from the stimulus funds. And so we do need some guidance of where you'd like to trim, where, you, where you'd like to remove some items, where you'd like to add additional funds or other categories that you'd like to do that. So with that, Mayor, I'll turn the time back over to you. Okay. And, and uh, we can hear from the public. Let me propose this. Um, there's a separate entry here uh, for hazard pay, but we have a we have a whole other agenda item on that. 
So rather than discuss it twice, because we've all agreed that we do want to do this program, with the understanding that we are going to fund it, it's just a question of how much it is. Um, can we take that and just wait for those comments in the next section so we don't do it twice? That would seem to make the best sense. We can, Mayor. The only reason I did list it on the table is just to see the bigger picture altogether. If, if I understand, and the recommendation is in it, it, it is that, and and but it's also subject to us, and it's Correct. also it's just also to give us a final number to put on this report. But what I'm saying is, I don't want to discuss it twice, and I want the public's focus to be on that for the next agenda item. So agreed. So understanding that you won't get an opportunity, you won't miss an opportunity to talk about the hazard pay issue, that's our next item, but if for everything else, um, you can raise your hand now if you wanna speak on this. I know there are a number of people in the audience I see who, pro who submitted requests. I, wait a minute, sorry. I see two hands raised, is that right? but I can't see whose hands they are. Mari? Carol Davis and Charlotte Ma ah, Mayer and uh, Carol Washburn. I have yeah. scrolled up far enough. Okay, so why don't we start with Carol Davis and she'll be followed by Charlotte Meyer. Carol, you're in the room now. You just need to unmute yourself. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and city council persons, city manager and city attorney. <clears throat> Who knew that five years could fly by so quickly? It was heartening to see many of you last Friday at the anniversary party of our much loved senior center and to connect with, excuse the expression, old friends. The excitement was palpable. The past year and a half felt like the world was cast under the spell of an evil stepmother and we were all asleep. But wait, not the savvy seniors. We did not wait for Prince Charming to wake us up. During the pandemic, we reached out to each other and organized our latest movement called the Caring Calabasas Club. Our mission is to network with established charities determined worthy by the 27 members of our club and provide a vehicle for social interaction for seniors a big concern for us during the pandemic, as well as providing good work for our whole community. We were knitting, sewing, collecting, networking as much as we could, given the social constraints. You witnessed some of the results of our efforts last Friday. Some of the organizations we're partnering with are Operation Gratitude, My Stuff Bags, Shoes for Souls, Books Build Bridges, The Lions Club, The Volunteer League of the San Fernando Valley, et cetera, et cetera. We're exploring partnering with the Ronald McDonald House, Bring Smiles to Seniors, and the One Breast Cancer Foundation. Once we open again and can network in person, the possibilities are endless. The biggest surprise and delight we have experienced is the reaction of Calabasians and neighbors of all ages who are embracing our movement. It is a contagion of a different kind that will reinforce the priorities we have all been examining this past year and make our city a kinder and more charismatic place to live. We're organized, we're viable, and we're relevant. Now we need a little seed money. Therefore, we would like to request $3,500 to make our city famous for our big hearts and to be able to answer the question that my dad used to ask each night at dinner, what is the best thing that happened to you today? Thank you in advance for your consideration. It is certainly a lot less than anything I've seen on Kendon's list. Kendon's list, I like that. That's what we'll call this. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. Okay. I didn't have, know I'd had such a list. <laughs> Next is Charlotte Meyer. Charlotte, you need to unmute yourself. Okay. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Okay. Uh, I know that there are many competing priorities, but I would be remiss if I didn't join <laughs> and think about uh, some of the priorities that I have. I also have a question before I start, because sometimes I was, I thought when I was thinking about this, I was working in the dark. I would like to know how much we spent in prior years on the film festival. 
And how do we get to $100,000 this year? To me, when I saw that number and it was, I, I looked at the other items on Kenjin's list or some of the items that I was aware of, it just didn't seem to fit in. I don't see it as infrastructure. And I don't see it as water and waste. I don't see it uh, as heroes pay. And I was just wondering how it got on this list. That's my question. And then I'll, after, if you don't have an answer for it, I'll just go on with what well, my- We'll have an answer at the end, go ahead. Okay. I'd like to propose that the council consider prioritizing all of its spending in a way that actually benefits our city in a substantial way. The senior center has been open for five years and we knew almost immediately, we did not include a, a shade structure for the patio. There are about a thousand square feet of patio that seniors avoid because of the heat and sun exposure that is present at least six months a year. Many residents of all ages go to the dermatologist multiple times a year to monitor skin cancer. This patio as it stands right now is most of the year wasted space. If we had shade, we would be providing a healthier, safer destination for our seniors. We would increase the actual size of usable space at the senior center by about 10%. We could expand our class offerings and have more events even multi-generational events as high school students performing concerts during the summer at our barbecues outside. Events that are planned in the multi-purpose room could be expanded to spill out on the patio without fear of too much sun or an uncomfortably hot day. And most importantly, a covered patio in the middle of summer could be rented to the general public and generate revenue for events. It could in time pay for itself. In terms of getting the most bang for the buck, please consider a shade structure for the senior center that will reap benefits for our city all year round for years and years to come. This is an infrastructure piece. And I think it might be able to wiggle in adjacent to the improvements at the Agora Calabasas Community Center, which are also a very high priority for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, we'll answer questions, staff can answer questions later when we're all done. So um, next I have Mark Citron. Hello, Mark. Mark? Hi. I'm Mark Citron, a Calabasas resident. I'm a little bit confused about the process ties in the projects, the amounts and the order, but when they're gonna be paid, you're gonna get this in two payments. Are you planning to pay the entire amount the first year and then wait for the second installment to come and pay back some city account? Because we don't really know what's gonna be happening the second year and you may need that money the second year for something else. So I would ask if you would prioritize the amounts and the order and also what should be paid the first year and what should be reserved and paid the second year since it's coming into installments, if I understand it correctly. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I don't have any other hands up that I see. And I wanna tell the public that if you don't raise your hand and you don't speak, we're not gonna go back and forth. So the, or I'm gonna close the public comment. I see one person James. raise their hand, okay. I see that. But There's two. two people. But I wanna make sure you guys understand this isn't a back and forth. So if you're waiting for something, don't wait. Because when I close the public hearing, that'll be it. So all hands up, I now have three of them. Mike McNutt. Name and organization you represent or city of residence. Mike, I saw you and then you, I don't see you now. Mike, did we have a technical thing? I think we did, Mr. Mayor. We can okay. call someone else. Mike, if you can hear me, if you can get back on. Oh, there you are. Oh, there okay. he is. Okay, Mike, are you here now? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, now we can oh, hear Oh, wonderful. Okay, wonderful. Uh, yes, so Mayor in uh, Council, this is Mike McNutt. I am the Public Affairs Communications Manager at Your Water District and the Chair of the Board for the Calabasas Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so I do work in Cal Calabasas, but I do not live uh, in Calabasas. Um, 
first of all, appreciate you taking some time to uh, give me an opportunity to converse with you about the chamber and some of the items, well, the item that's on the list right now. Um, I know that we've all talked in different capacities, at least in a couple of different meetings about um, the uh, importance of the chamber um, to our local economy and to the business community. And um, <clears throat> I think that I've heard a lot of different um, input from all council members or most council members and uh, in talking with uh, Kinden, uh, there are your new awesome city manager, I must say. Um, and um, one of the things that I want to highlight to you is to um, recognize that you know, we're not just another business. We are, again, as you know, uh, because we've been working with you for 55 years, basically. Um, we're also an advocate for all the local business community. And just like businesses, uh, it's, our it's our duty to make sure that we pivot and maybe change and that we can um, mold, if you ourselves, if you will, to uh, the use of current technologies, current trends, to make sure that we are actually getting out and informing the community, the local business community uh, and beyond um, of the things in, of, of why Calabasas is such a destination spot to set up your business or to move into. We recognize, especially now after the pandemic, um, the need to make sure that we bring uh, businesses in uh, to the community, um, mom and pops or, or different to, um, you know, uh, make sure that those empty storefronts ha have a business associated with them and to them. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is we need to and will be using different techniques to reach out uh, to the communities, uh, both here in Calabasas and beyond, to bring in businesses to, to the community. Um, I kind of wanted to say that with one other, with one other, um, I guess, one other thing. What we would like to do is present a business plan to the city, um, maybe in August, and really highlight what our thoughts and what our vision is about how to do what I'm saying that we want to do. And the one thing that we'll be able to do is we'll be able to continue to work together as we've had for 55 years now to make sure that Calabasas is the absolute best place that you can live, work, and play. Our commitment has never been stronger, and we look forward to continuing that as we move forward. So that's that's it, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, I had I had Jill Whitney up there and now the hand's down. Okay, is your hand back up? I know we have some technical difficulties sometimes. Why don't we let Jill Whitney, she was next. Okay, there you are. Go ahead, unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay, I do apologize. I just want to make sure that uh, the hazard pay is next, right? We're not doing it at this point. That's what I said, yes. That's what I thought. Thank you. All right. We will do Bridget Carl next. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and City Council. Do you hear me okay? Yes. And City Manager. Um, uh, Kendon, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to put us on this agenda to really have a thoughtful and constructive conversation about what the chamber is about and what we can do to help this uh, community and the small businesses for the impact that they have uh, incurred during the pandemic. Our role is to make sure that these small businesses survive that they are flourishing and will able to stay in our community for a long period of time. Um, I, I want to reiterate what Mike, Mike, Duck, Mike said, sorry, that um, we will create and develop a business strategy with, with the city council and the city to make sure that these businesses are sustainable, that they are in a sufficient environment that they can grow and um, develop a whether they expand or create even a stronger impact in this community. Um, the other commitment is that we will always be part of the visitor and tourism. We act as the city of Calabasas visitor and tourism. We are working on our first directory in several years 
that will help with the hotels and restaurants. And um, as we had put together a plan to mail this directory to every single resident in the city of Calabasas and beyond to make sure that these businesses know that they are supported by their residents and also the city. Um, so we're very uh, anxious to get this started and we appreciate the consideration to fund these efforts and it will be more than just one person working on it. Our goal is to make sure that we are fully staffed and up and running like we were prior to the pandemic and uh, we're working hard on it. So thank you for the consideration. We hope that um, you know, we can work together as a partner to make this happen for our business community. Thank you. Thank you. And I do not have any other hands raised, so I'm on the cusp of closing the public hearing unless we get something else. Did anyone call in, Amari? No, Mr. Mayor, we don't have any um, calls or no more hands. Okay, so we don't have any more public comment. I'm gonna close the public hearing portion of this item and move to the council. Who would like to go first? All right, well, Mary Sue, I see your, your face first on the screen. Would you like to go first? I'll tell you what, you go first here. I'll go first next time. Peter? Or actually, Mary Sue, I, I, you're muted. Are you going? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. I apologize. I thought by hitting the space bar, I was fine. Um, do you want me to go first? Yeah, if you want to, yes. Sure. Um, first of all, I want to thank staff for putting together um, these this first uh, go at um, the many different ways we could spend these funds to meet the the categories and the criteria that have been set forth. Um, I think, and I. I hope that there will be further engagement with the community as there's greater awareness that these funds are available and we have some discretion um, on how to use them. I was um, especially, this is the first, that was the first time I saw all those categories. So, uh, I, you know, I, I think I'd almost want a whole meeting on exploring category by category, but I don't think that this is the meeting to do that. But a couple categories that I was most interested in, I think I've already asked about the infrastructure um, and whether or not that could um, help us with our AM emergency radio station. I, I know that we had a brief conversation about trying to determine the reach of that radio station um, and if it could go further. It is probably the single reliable source for um, information in a uh, power outage. Uh, travel and tourism. I think that we really have almost intentionally decided to kind of um, keep it quiet, any kind of promotion. I know we do the directory that was referenced just a minute ago, but um, I see other cities that have separate websites um, promoting all sorts of activities and shops and restaurants and, and things of that sort. And, and um, I heard mostly from the chamber about recovery um, of, of lost businesses, storefronts and kind of rebuilding the chamber and rebuilding um, the momentum we had. And so I don't know if it would be a separate entity that does our travel and tourism, um, but I, I've seen a lot of cities that, that have this. And, and if the chamber, um, which I'll get to in a minute because I'm, I was really excited by what I heard, um, it would be nice to see where the chamber would like to take our city um, by showing us examples of other cities and other chambers that they'd like to model themselves after or, or that, that they have the ideas so we can you know, work together on the direction um, the chamber goes. I don't want to get too involved. That's not my area of expertise, but certainly the promotion of the city is something 
I would uh, want to know about. Um, uh, the seniors request for $3,500 that was already approved at the last meeting. I couldn't, I didn't know if that was something new. I don't think it was approved. It was not approved. It, it Mayor, it was, that was approved as part of the budget last meeting. Oh, we, had, we inserted that as part of the budget. So this would offset it. So the council could make that choice to use stimulus monies instead of, um, general fund monies but it was approved under our general fund expenditures last okay. week. So to be clear, this was a new request. It's, it's, it's just unusual. It's the same amount of money. And I, I, Mayor so and Capo, my understanding is that the request is the same request as was previously approved, but rather is to shift the source of the funds from general fund to stimulus funds. I don't believe it's another 3,500 on top. I think it's the same 3,500 as previously approved. It's rather the source of it. Thank you. Um, That's my understanding as well, Mary Sue and council members, is that there is just one request from caring seniors for 3,500. And I will confirm it is in the budget for next year using general fund money. Okay. And then just a couple other senior items. Um, the shade structure seems like that's something we should do and should have done. I, we've talked about it. I don't know why it didn't, why it hasn't been done. Um, I would like to see that done and maybe even with some misters or something underneath it so that it gets so hot here so that it's comfortable. So does that come from stimulus money? It does, it seems like, I don't know how that relates but it seems like it should be done. Um, uh, another couple thoughts about seniors. Um, gosh, where are my notes? Oh, here it is. Um, Meals on Wheels, the mental health and the, the socialization and the well-being and checking in with seniors. I, I wish we had um, a, a, a new, maybe we need a new needs assessment of our seniors and um, what what their needs are, um, I, I I'm thinking that we might expand Meals on Wheels um, if that falls in the category of kind of wellness. And then when we first created the senior center, we talked about a lunch program. Um, that is something that. Um, some seniors, not all seniors, some seniors can go into the commons and have lunch and other seniors can. not But looking at a um, senior lunch program with our <coughs> that we have in the um, Founders Hall. Um, I, 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 I also question the $100,000 from the film festival. I remember receiving that request um, I, I'm not sure how we, if this is just word of mouth, that these opportunities, the 3,500 for the seniors um, caring program, the money for um, the film festival, uh, it just seems like we're, we're, we're being reactive in, instead of being proactive in looking. And so maybe we could spend some time being a little more proactive in what, what, what things are out in the community that um, that uh, would qualify in these categories? But I think this is a great list to start with. I want to th I thank the staff. Thank you, Kinden, and um, thank you to the chamber. I, I again, I was really excited to hear about um, you know the energy behind um, the kind of rebranding and a new business model for the chamber. And um, it's, we've got a very strong board. I think the time is just right. And the funds are there. And I would be supporting, um, I would be supportive of that. Thank you. Peter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I too want to recognize uh, our city manager, Kim and Meek, for his uh, efforts putting this together. And thank you for your extra time explaining all of this to us uh, and to me personally on the side as well. Um, as I understand it, the recovery of City of Calabasas lost revenues, one of our larger numbers there, the $2 million, um, 
as we put money into that, that goes into our general fund and then could be used for anything. So um, for any of these things where we can shave out some money, I would suggest that we just continue to increase that one. Of course, we can only increase it up to the maximum amount of lost revenues that we have due to COVID between now and 2024, but uh, we'll have to let our, our city staff analyze what that maximum number might be. But what I got the impression of was that the $2 million would be uh, something we could easily allocate and we might be able to allocate a little bit more. Um, as, and, and as we put the money there, remember these things like um, it, maybe the senior center uh, patio cover that doesn't really fall under anything that the uh, Recovery Act would pay for, if we put it under lost revenue, transfer that to the general fund, we can then spend it there in a later date as we see fit. So that's how those items would actually come to pass as I understand it. Um, as far as the Agora Hills Calabasas Community Center, uh, I'd like to make a couple of suggestions. First of all, as I've looked at the numbers, the entire roof replacement is about 1.1 million. Uh, compared to the 400,000 for just the gymnasium roof that we were looking at before. And the HVAC units, we don't have a price on, but having done a couple of things in that industry, I can tell you we're probably looking at about 400,000. Uh, so that puts that cost at 1.5 million. Um, contingencies to handle, you know, the bidding overruns, that sort of stuff, another 300,000. I think a number of about 1.8 million is sufficient for the Agora Hills Calabasas Community Center. So I would suggest we take that down a notch. And I would also like to say that if we are fronting the money uh, for the Agora Hills Calabasas Community Center, um, I think we would expect that any grant money that comes to the community center uh, first go back towards that money that we put into the infrastructure and that any remaining money, whether we get grants or not for that, um, we would be looking to the city of Agora Hills to chip in their half. Um, I'm looking at fronting the money, uh, not looking at paying for the facility outright uh, as the city of Calabasas. So I do wanna ask our city manager uh, as he puts this plan together uh, to come up with some sort of a, a mechanism to make sure that it's understood. We're fronting the money, we're not paying the whole thing outright. And we need to have that conversation with the city of Agora on how to, how and when to get the other half back. Um, for the Chamber of Commerce, uh, yeah, we did allocate 50,000 already. We have the 500,000 potential to allocate here, which would be not for the Chamber of Commerce per se, but for lots of things to stimulate business here in the city, some of which may be going to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and I'd like to see that happen. And I want to thank uh, Bridget and Mike for speaking tonight and for offering to put together that business plan. And I will personally like to take you up on that offer. Uh, any way that you can help us get the word out, we certainly want to stimulate our, our retail and uh, other businesses here in Calabasas. It's been a big goal of mine to to keep putting business back into the empty storefronts that we have. And we certainly have lost a few during COVID and uh, that was hard to see and I would love to see those replaced. Um, I sat down and I broke down everything in a percentage um, based on the 5.7 million. Our infrastructure projects, we're only doing 9% when you add up the drainage ditch, the culvert, the two sewers, only about 9% of our money we're spending on infrastructure. And I'm gonna suggest that there's another category in there that we're missing out on. It says invest in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. And broadband is something that is seriously lacking in Calabasas. Um, I would love to see the city launch uh, a, a study into a fiber optic master plan. Uh, many other cities already have them. Uh, would be a study as to how we could get fiber put into the street the use of uh, installing conduits for cellular uh, companies to use in the future, combined with putting in fiber now, sharing that cost, uh, and making sure that we get that fiber optic distributed throughout Calabasas, because as we have it now, we have good wireless, uh, not wireless, we have good broadband connection, at least through coax and cable, uh, maybe some DSL in some parts of the city, and we have horrible internet in other parts of the city. And I think it would be good to study that and see how we can make it 
uh, an infrastructure of fiber optic that would give everybody equal and solid access to the internet. Uh, and I think that would certainly be covered under this. I think a master plan of that nature would probably be in the vicinity of $50,000 uh, for a consultant to put that together. But I also think we have some great resources in our communications uh, uh, commission uh, that we should be leaning on for some suggestions and some direction. Was that the end? I think that was it. I'm just looking at my nose real quick here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear the end. No, so that's just... all right. So I'll, I'll finish with these uh, these last quick items. I would agree with uh, Council Member Maurer on the film festival. I'm, I'm a little shocked at the size of that number. Uh, it looks like uh, quite a shortfall, and I don't understand how that's related to the stimulus fund. So I'm not sure that we can just fund that right out of this uh, American Rescue Act here. Uh, it could be something that comes out of that lost revenue that we can allocate at a future time. Uh, but I'd need to understand better uh, why that shortfall is there and how that benefits the city of Calabasas. Uh, I would like to support it. I'm just not sure that that number is proportional to where our community's interests lie right now. Uh, and then the two numbers I think that are really short, uh, the, the senior center asking for $3,500 when we have <laughs> All of these other five, six, and seven figure uh, numbers sitting in front of us was, uh, was heartbreaking to me. I think our seniors need a little bit extra money here. So as we move forward, if somebody has suggestions on where we need to increase that, I'm in favor of that. And we also got some last minute communication from the library as well. Again, another organization that really serves the community as a whole. So I'd like to make sure that we're allocating the money where it's used uh, proportionally and fairly by all residents of Calabasas. And with that, thank you, James. Thank you, uh, David. I, I can't hear you, David. Does that work? Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, great comments already. I am a little bit all over the place, so let me let me go ahead and just confirming with Kinden and and uh, Ron and our city attorney the the for everyone there two payments uh, will be coming to the city at half the amount and then half the amount again and we have to use these funds we're required by law to use these funds in the next four years by 2024 correct so I'll answer that yes we're receiving in two equal installments we have not received yet the first installment so whenever we receive that then we'll receive the second one theoretically 365 days later. We are, uh, the law requires that the cost be incurred by December, 2024. It, all the costs need to be spent by December, 2026. Means cash out the door and gone by December, 2026. But if you will, contract signed, all ready to go by December, 2024. Thank you. And uh, just, I'll start with the senior center real quick. The, uh, obviously, we've already approved the 3,500. I don't know if it, it, it I'll, I'll ask for that and the and the shade as well. I, I don't know that those are necessarily appropriate to use for the stimulus funds here, uh, but I do uh, support as we are, we already supported as a council, the 3,500 for the Cal Caring Calabasas Club. And I know, as Mary Sue said, we did talk about shade and all types of uh, possible alternatives for the outdoor area. So uh, I'm sure we, we could find that in our general fund budget if we all approved it and uh, if it was not necessarily appropriate in this stimulus discussion. Um, I also wanted to say I agree with one of the speakers, uh, uh, Norm Citron. Uh, he raised the idea and the concern that I constantly raise of the issue of TOT and sales tax in the future. And I know while things are opening up now, and while it's very exciting, restaurants are opening, hotels are opening, and hopefully we will, with help from the chamber and our city, get tourism going again and, and, and back to normal. Uh, I know a lot of the facilities, the hotels and the restaurants have are short staff right now, and they can't even hire. Uh, restaurants are having difficulty hiring in our city alone, let alone others, uh, dishwashers, cooks. And so while things are opening up, 
if people go there to eat or they go there to try and stay at a hotel and they don't get the service or staff, uh, it isn't staffed the way they would normally expect, that may affect the coming year as well, even though they're open. So I want to be a little cautious, that's all. And uh, along those lines, I, I also would agree with Peter's comments, a number of them. One in particular, the recovery for City of Calabasas lost revenue funds in that section, which is earmarked at 2 million right now. I, I think it would be good to bolster that a little bit uh, as best we can at this point. So I, I would wanna see that a little higher if possible. Uh, things such as the library that were mentioned, we all received notice. We all think the library is one of the jewels in the city and it's fantastic. If there is a way to use some funds in that regard as well, I would welcome that consideration. Uh, and I didn't wanna jump over it, but I wanna thank Ron and Kendon for doing this work and the presentation along with all those who you got to help you as well. Uh, it, is, it is a great start, uh, more than a great start. As far as the community center, again, I agree with what uh, Peter said. Uh, I, I wanna be careful as to what we are uh, agreeing to. I wanna make certain there's a plan in place and whatever that plan entails, uh, and, and, and I don't think we need a third party evaluation yet, but we definitely need to have something very specific, uh, whether it's Kinden uh, going ahead and doing it, uh, making certain that we are protected, that uh, half of what we are advancing is recoverable from Agura, or there is some other plan in place. I would wanna see that before we give any a very large expenditure of funds. Reserving those funds, I understand, but before we agree to spend them, I would like to see that very detailed or specific plan in place. As far as the contribution uh, Chamber of Commerce, we've already approved that. There are additional funds here, uh, not just for the Chamber, but for other entities. We, we as a council put forward emergency funds for small businesses and grants in our city in the same amount. Uh, and I think it helps some businesses quite, quite a bit. The only thing I wanna be careful of is avoid our city council deciding these types of issues, such as we're getting a lot of requests. I'm sure we're gonna get more the minute this meeting is over in the coming weeks from other entities uh, asking for funds. In the past, our city made certain that the council was not the place and James and Mary Sue, you were the ones on council, so you'd know better than anyone. Uh, it made certain that people didn't come to council and ask for grants and ask for funds, and it didn't become a decision of the council. Rather, in some instances, we turned that over to Rotary, uh, a third party that we trusted and we knew would do a wonderful job of administering those funds. So maybe that's where additionally we could work with the Chamber of Commerce to help in that regard as well. I just wanna be careful that it doesn't become anything at all uh, that becomes a polit political or first come as opposed to the right place to use these funds. I agree with the discussion, uh, use of public health funds. Uh, mental health is something as a city, we have not spent a great deal of time discussing or using funds for, and if there are potential funds to be used here, as I, I read or heard in the description of the four items, I think it's something we should consider. It also ties into our city's issues involving homelessness. So not just the homeless, but our city as a whole, I think mental health is something that could be addressed with some funds as well. Uh, our flu clinics and vaccine, I assume that's already in the recovery funds here. If not, I think it's something that we should absolutely uh, look to. Uh, a couple more things, uh, recovery for tennis and swim, senior center, lost dues, absolutely agree with, and uh, travel and tourism with the chamber. I'm very excited to explore and see what we can do together. Uh, Meals on Wheels was brought up. We also have a program, One Generation, that has come to council. It's a great program, and we did provide some minimal funding uh, individually. I don't know as a council that we have yet. And uh, the broadband infrastructure, uh, in addition 
to what we can do with these funds, I'd like to see if we can also look for other grants outside. And other than that, I am done with my comments. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, some very good points in there. I'm sure we'll be going back and forth on these uh, with once everyone's done, but I appreciate your remarks. Um, before we go back and forth with comments about other people's comments and getting collaboration, we still have a couple. Uh, Alicia, I'm sorry, you guys keep switching positions. No. I'm sorry. Alicia, you're up next. Okay. I mean, I'm going to just pretty much go over my notes that I've taken. Um, support additional money for the senior center, the shade structure. Meals on Wheels, where are we with that contract? Staff know offhand? I had worked with I had worked with her and then she was going to work with staff. They were like during the pandemic they were looking they were got a huge amount of requests from Calabasas. Um so they were looking for some additional funding from us. Are you talking about one generation? Yes. Yeah. I think that's a great question. We should find out. That's um, I have the contact, but I know Michael McConville does as well. So let's follow up. But they, last time I spoke to them, just the amount of in interest and need in our community really increased. So I'd like to make sure that we're supporting that organization. Let's see, library, I'd like to support um, the requests that were made. Um, one thing that I would really like to see under this is money under behavioral health care needs money for Gabriel or whatever we have to do to support the, um, the, the needs, the needs that we're seeing in our community relating to that. I know we're currently looking for beds and um, that's a whole other meeting, but I want to make sure that we have money set aside for that. Um, under government services, police, fire, and public safety, I know we have improvements that we want to make on these subjects, make sure that we have money set aside. One thing that I think that we should possibly look at, and I think it would qualify under this, is looking at an addition to having our generator, possibly a microgrid at City Hall to really increase our, um, decrease our, decrease our dependency and power outages in the event of a fire and to allow like our own cooling stations. I just know a lot of other cities are looking at that and if that's something that can be explored. But some of the things that we've discussed in terms of public safety, I think this is a perfect opportunity to really act on that. In terms of the chamber, we've already talked about the tourism. The other thing that I would like to, to have the chamber and staff look at well, let me back up. I think doing economic development is more important now than ever, but it's very hard to do economic development when we don't know the businesses that are in our community. We don't know when they come and when they go. And I'm not just trying to propose a business registry where people have to pay, but all other communities have some way to know who's here. And we don't have that. And I've always found that really odd and um, really detrimental to the work that we're trying to do. So I know there's ways around it. They don't have to put a fee, but especially in terms of public safety, when we want to message, find a way to communicate with our businesses, we struggle. We don't have the proper contacts. So that's something I think that with the money that we're giving the chamber in partnership with our staff that they can work on. But we just can't go on anymore. I mean, our staff knocks on doors. When we were, when we were going to have to lock down some of our businesses um, last June, staff literally was like going door to door. It's just not an effective way to communicate. So it would be a business registry. They don't have to pay. It's not big brother, but it's a way to know who's here, which we can look most of the cities I know do such a thing. So that's something that I would like to add to our list. Let me see what else I have. And I think that's it for now. There'll okay. be more. Um, Kendon, there's been a request. There's been a couple of questions that um, perhaps Michael McConville can answer. So there's been a request to have him come into the room. He doesn't have to speak right now, but if you staff could arrange for that, if he's available um, while I speak. Um, okay, I just will go through uh, my items here. Um, I would preface my remarks by saying that although it seems like a lot of money, we have 
some real substantial things we're going to need to spend on, some of which have not been touched on in this report or by the comments, and I want to just go through a few of those as well. Um, I agree with just about everybody's comments that the first two categories are key of key importance and will take the most. So it looks like you're coming in from the heavens, Michael. There was a little flash of white and a halo surrounding you. <laughs> you know, but just wait till I'm done with my comments before you supersede me here. Um, so those two are, are, to me, the most important, particularly the uh, first one, the recovery of the city's lost revenues, which you may not know the extent of. I don't want to deplete that. And I agree that several of you have said to the extent things go back into that, we should be uh, aware and actively doing that. We approve the Calabasas Chamber of Commerce contribution of 50,000. Um, the other uh, drainage and sewage and culvert repair, I, I support. The seniors, I would support. I, I think we are, I, I don't know if they know what they necessarily are going to need. I would uh, approve $5,000. I think that's a reasonable amount. And I would also, uh, I like the idea of the roof uh, extension or, or the sun shield, whatever we, we do that um, in, in a tactful and tasteful way. So it looks nice. Um, not just a tarp. Um, we're going to discuss the hazard pay next uh, thing, the library. Uh, we've, we've gotten some communication from our longest standing library commissioner and also uh, some other people. Uh, I, I'm not sure what the issue is on the library or the shortfalls, but if we're able to make that work, I would like to spend some money on the library. It's, it's a, it really is an important part of the city and we when we seceded from the county, we've set apart the library as being just unparalleled. And I, and I would hate to see it, it doesn't sound like it's falling into disrepair, but I'd hate to see it go down a few notches because it's lacking for money. The $500,000 plan for the Chamber of Commerce, um, I, I guess if we do something like that, which I would be supportive of, of that kind of allocation, we'd have to see a specific idea of how that money would be used. And I didn't mention it last time because there just was not time to do this uh, because it went very quickly. But if we give a grant of say $10,000 to a business, I would expect that business to be a member of the chamber. In other words, I would say here's a $10,000 grant or a $5,000 grant, and we're taking out your first, however much it is, for a year's membership in the chamber. That way it's at least brought back into the community. And of course it would only be Calabasas geographic within the city limits businesses that would be even getting these in the first place. Uh, the film festival, I, I don't quite understand that request um, other than a desire to have an extra 100,000 because it's set for September. And so I would assume their budgets are already been set and everything's lined up and ready to go. Um, any additional monies would be coming from another source like the general fund. I don't, I don't think the stimulus fund would be needed. I, I know that in speaking to Kendon, because I asked him, we've already paid 15,000 for this year. If they need more money just to survive, perhaps they could request it out of the general fund, Kendon. I don't know. Um, I'm happy to speak with the representatives after the meeting. Um, I had a question about the services and support for unhoused individuals. What what would $250,000 do? What were you spending that on that we're not doing now? Mayor and, and Michael, you can help me out with this. Michael has been doing quite a bit of research and looking at uh, where we are deficient in some of our areas with uh, helping the in-house population. And uh, he's been um, making contact with different service providers. So Michael, I'll let you talk with that. Um, again, this would be a placeholder in general and we'd come back with a specific plan in the future, but just if we were going to do that, we'd like to consider that now. So, Michael. Yeah, um, thank you, Mayor. Um, the I guess the amount was set um, from Malibu's current appropriation for homeless um, outreach or additional homeless outreach that they incur. Um, they have, uh, I think, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars that they appropriate every year for just two or three outreach workers. So these are individuals that physically walk the streets and communicate with businesses or, or the city hall to, again, connect with individuals to um, get them into enrolled into the county services. So that's the number that um, 
Malibu has, and that's essentially the going rate um, for um, long-term regular outreach, if that's something the city council desires. Furthermore, if there was um, you know, bed rentals or, or bed um, you know, reservations or something of that sort, I, from the initial conversations I've had, it would be um, you know, quite a significant investment. Okay, I, I think Malibu has a larger geographic area of where the homeless are and a larger problem. As much as we've had an increase in our problems, I believe just from, from studying it a little bit that their, their numbers are many times what our numbers are. So I'm not, I don't know that we need $250,000 for that. If it's just a placeholder, I wouldn't count on spending all that money unless there was something really specific brought forward. Um, Mayor, I wouldn't correct. want to appropriate it and then never see it again and not know what it went to. And, and Mayor, that's correct. This, uh, you know, this is again uh, with the understanding that as we move forward over the next three years, if we do decide as as a community to, to invest more in services for the unhoused populations, this would be a way to do so without it tapping into the general funds. Uh, again, it, it's a, a placeholder, and we'd be coming back with specific plans for the council to approve. Okay, and then I. Um... I think the next category, rebuilding public sector capacity, is going to need more than 150,000. I, I think that number is low, Kendon, um, just looking at what's included in there. Uh, I support the upgrades to the communication structure. Now, there are several items that aren't on here that I'd like the council to consider or at least understand why I think we're going to fall short on money here. I had asked previously about restaurant workers and hotel workers who had to work during the pandemic. This would not be executives or management. This would be people who had to clean the rooms of strangers, including perhaps people from out of the area who, uh, you know, they took uh, great hazards in doing so. This would be people who, you know, served perhaps hundreds of people either through a drive-through or, or over the counter and takeout and they are low income wage earners and they did not, they also jeopardize their health for us. And we have done, you know, we've done nothing really for them. So I, I would like to at least look at that. Uh, I know we deferred that discussion. Um, police, fire and public health. I think there are, I know we're a contract city, Matthew, and we have some limitations because they're not our employees, but I, would think that we'd have some programs that we could implement that were directly impacted by the pandemic in those areas. Um, I mean, just throwing out examples, there are things we stopped doing, such as teen court, that program became defunct. We could refund that. We could refund some diversion programs or assistance programs. Um, we haven't done any of that. So I'd like to take a look a little bit at that uh, in the public safety area. Um, sure. This city traditionally, and, and I'm sorry to say it, but we all know, and, and it doesn't get said often enough, does very little for its, uh, for its low income or, or lower income residents. Um, I wanna look at, can we use these stimulus funds to help supplement in, uh, people's rents or help put food on the table for people who lost their jobs, things of that sort. And again, this would be for the lowest uh, income sector, not, not just for anybody. Um, I, I think I have heard from many residents who are struggling and are going to have to either move out of the city or don't know where their next place to live is going to be. And it's very sad. And we now that we have this assistance from the federal government, it'd be nice to help those people out. Um, and then we have a couple items, two in particular, and that'll be the end of my comments that that I think are in dire need of help. We received a very bad report last year about the Calabasas Tennis and Swim Center. And it talked about some long-term issues and problems there. Now, I think there's some gray area as to whether stimulus money can be used for that necessarily, but we also got a report about midway through the pandemic that revenue, the revenue stream was falling down from the Tennis and Swim Center because uh, we were open less hours, we were having less programming, we weren't able to rent it out. Um, and we had to re do a lot of refunds. So that is not on here. And I think that needs to be on here. I don't want the what happened to the community center to all of a sudden happen to the tennis and swim center. 
So that needs to, I think, a separate line item. We need to estimate what that would be and what we're allowed to do. The other one that, and I mentioned this many times, is Wild Walnut Park. You know, we bought the property 18 years ago. And we've been working on improvements ever since, and we've done very, very little. We sent it out to bid right before the pandemic. It came back at about double what we thought it would be to finish all the improvements there. So our community services director at the time, Jeff Rubin, was going to bring it back in increments. Then the pandemic hit, then Jeff left, and now it's left in limbo. We are not done with that project. Of dire concern to me and there is the numerous public safety element features of that project. As we changed the focus of the park, we were anticipating because we're putting a children's play area and a dog park, we'd have a lot more people walking to the park. We'd have a lot of children walking to the park. And we have not made improvements to the public roadways, to the sidewalk areas that need safe access. We were talking about putting a street light there and to lowering the speeds all and reconfiguring the parking lot, the ingress and egress. All of that needs to be done for public safety purposes. If we can use the stimulus money for that, we should prioritize that. It would be tragic to have something happen to somebody because we didn't do the improvements that we promised we would do. Um, and any other properties that we might look at and that we own that were able to, that got affected by the pandemic that were able to improve. So those are my comments. I know that's a lot of money that's being requested, but please keep those things in mind. As I understand it, Kendon, we've approved, we're, we're gonna approve something for the hazard pay. So that's gonna be done tonight. We, we already approved 50,000 for the chamber and we've already approved this part of the seniors request. So nothing else needs to be actually appropriated tonight, correct? That's correct, Mayor. This is again for guidance and direction. Um, and we can come back with specific allocations at a future date. Do any council members have anything that I missed that needs needs done tonight, needs to be done tonight as opposed to August? Out of the stimulus money, Mary Sue, and then Alicia. I just wanted to add that um, I, I anticipate that when staff comes back with kind of after going through this input, that there'll be more details in each of the areas. There'll be more details on the $500,000 allotment to businesses in the chamber. There'll be more details um, to the homeless plan, which um, I'm supportive of, of doing whatever we can. Um, and then all of the, the projects that, that James named. So I think that it'll be a more accurate picture also. And again, if, I would encourage the public or staff to come up with ideas. I don't even know if our own commissioners were made aware of this. They may have been discussing an issue meeting after meeting that would fall perfectly in a category, but unless they were notified that um, we, the, about the categories, the criteria, this just isn't you know anything but very specific items. I just think we need to continue um, gathering the information and then have more details on what we have discussed. Thank you. Alicia, did you have comments? I just, I didn't know Mike, Mike, since Michael was on the meeting now, if with one generation, if they ever got back to us with any. Oh yeah, we were going to ask that. Yeah. Right. Since he's here. Yeah. I'll, I'll follow up. Um, long story short is uh, they, they didn't get back to us, okay. um, but, but I will follow up. Okay, so then, and then I also, that was a good idea about the commissioners. Maybe we can send an email, you know, just a blank email, making sure the commissioners are aware of this money and if they have any ideas. I thought that was a good idea. And then also the tennis and swim center. Um, I didn't mention that in my comments, but I would like to explore the capital needs of that building. Okay, Peter. I, I would agree. We don't have to allocate uh, most of this money tonight. We just have to give some good direction to uh, to our city manager here and, and our staff. A uh, couple of things that we might want to consider uh, if this council is in agreement on them. Uh, the, the senior center request for $3,500 or, <clears throat> or $5,000 is a small amount of money. And that sounds like something they want to get going on immediately, which is to get their programming going. Uh, so that might be 
a little more urgent. And then the other one is the last line item. If we are looking at funding the upgrade of the TV master channel uh, for council and commission meetings, uh, that one sounds like a long lead item. And if we're going to be doing combined live Zoom uh, hybrid meetings uh, coming up in the future, that might be something to get started on sooner rather than later too. So just for your consideration, those two might also be uh, something you'd consider putting on the fixed agenda tonight. Well, actually, if you want to make a motion to that effect, we could take that up now. I, I would make that motion if I have support from others, yes. Okay, so the motion would be it's 125000 for the, uh, the upgrades to the communication system. And how much were you allocating to the seniors, of the, which you've already gotten 3500 from the general fund? So you're, I guess you're... Oh, the, the 3500 was the money I understood they need immediately. So that would be it. I don't think we need to add more to that. I certainly will support it, but I don't see anything else as urgent. Okay, so that'd be $3,500 coming out of this fund instead of the general fund. Yes, but I like your idea of rounding it up to $5,000. Uh, well, all right, then make it $5,000. We'll make it $5,000 for the seniors, the one twenty-five dollars for the TV Master Channel. And I'm sorry, the ones that you mentioned already as well are the Hazard or Hero Pay. That's coming up. Um, but again, that we're funding tonight, right? Yes, but we haven't, we, we don't yes. in this motion. Okay. Yeah, but and the chamber already got taken care of. So that goes already out there. Yep. All right. Is there a second to that, and then we'll have further discussion? Oh, wait. I just have a question. Yes. Can someone provide a little more information about the, um, like the upgrade to the television and communication? The urgency. The urgency. I just, well, I'm in favor of it. I just would like to hear a little more. Oh. Arvin is available if we need to um, bring him in. All right, bring him in. There he is. Hello, Arvin. Hi, Arvin. Hello. Okay, I'm sure you could hear me now. Yes, we had a question about the RGC. Right. Yes, what, I heard. This covers. Yes, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council members. Um, Basically, it's to uh, facilitate our extra camera that we need or even a computer that we need to do a hybrid type of meeting. But in addition to that, as you know, we've been in the same facility since 2008 and some of our equipment is outdated and uh, some of our connections aren't even uh, up to date. And uh, we've been Band-Aid working through all these years trying to, you know, piece all the pieces together to get it still going. So ideally this would help us to uh, maybe do a little overhaul and update all our equipment so that we could even uh, go forward and produce what we have been producing and to a better way. Thank if you. Like specific equipment list, I could give you that information as well, yeah. Nope, I just wanted to, especially for the public to hear as well. So thank yes, you. Yes. So it's okay. a basic, upgrade of our 14-year-old uh, equipment that we have here at City Hall. While, we're, while you're here, can you describe to us what the hybrid meeting will look like? I know the details aren't decided, but visually, how it works? Um, well, that's up to the council, of course, but I imagine if some of you are at home like you are now and some of you are here in the chamber, um, obviously we have to integrate our CTV channel uh, along with Zoom, so that whoever's uh, either audience members, uh, the public, if they're either here or uh, at home. So it's a hybrid, basically, of the two systems. So what we'll need is, of course, the cameras that are the five cameras in the chamber, in addition to some computer setups so that they could see and hear you if you're in the chamber, as well as, again, if you're not in the chamber. And then, of course, you, the mayor, if you're running the meeting in the chamber, We'll have to work out how to bring in people that are on Zoom versus who's physically there. So, um, yeah, we, we're working on that. So it's up to you, oh, council members, how we want to proceed with this after August. There was a bill in the state legislature. I don't know its status that was going to require hybrid. It was amended to include 250000 
or more. However, in that bill was some funding incentives, I thought, to cities that did it. So we'll take a look at what the final version of that bill is and we'll track it. That might influence what we decide to do. All right, any qu other questions, Mary Sue, before we? No, I understand why we right. would, um, approve this this evening. Thank you. Will you second it, Alicia? Yeah, I know you. you... Yes, I'll okay. second it. Then um, any further discussion about the items that I mentioned in the motion? All right, roll call, please. Council Member Kraut? Aye. Council Member Shapiro? Yes. Yes, still. But obviously, you. I need help with my technology here, right? <laughs> Council Member Weintraub? Yes. Mayor Pertem Maurer? Aye. Mayor Bosedra? Aye. Motion carries, Thanks. Mr. Mayor. And just to reiterate, it's $125,000 for the uh, communications upgrades and $5,000 to the Caring Calabasas. Of the $5,000, $3,500 will be shifted from what we approved last time in the general fund to this, uh, this pot of money here. But there would be a total of $5,000. Okay. Next, um, we are done with this item. Mayor? Yes. Just before we move on, I did get an email that uh, Kelly Fries is in the attendee list. Uh, Kelly uh, coordinates and works with the film festival. I don't know if the council had any questions at this time or if you'd like to explore that at a later date, but I did receive an email that they, they are on the Zoom. I, I saw them and we asked for public comment about 10 times and, and no one said anything. And I, I can't go back because I've got 50 people in the room there. And if I go back with one, I'm going to have to at, allow everyone else to comment. I, it would not be fair. I mean, I gave so many opportunities. That's why I say it 10 times. So I'm sorry. We'll take it up another time. I'd be happy to talk to them. And I'm sure any of us would in the interim. Um, Thank you. So uh, if there's nothing else on this item, staff's been given direction. It's now a little after eight, what, about eight, 10, so why don't we uh, take a 10 minute break and we'll come back with the hazard pay issue.
David back? No, there he is. I'm sorry. People, people keep moving around. All right. Is everybody ready? I see everybody's face. Okay. Um, are we ready to go, CTV? We're ready when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. You can begin. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Time for the second half of our meeting. Our meeting now moves to item two, continue business, approve an appropriation amount for a one-time Hazard Hero premium pay program for frontline grocery workers. To bring everybody up to speed before we turn to the staff, the council had rejected the idea of an ordinance compelling businesses to pay, but had agreed that it would enact its own uh, hazard pay, hero pay ordinance, uh, excuse me, bonuses, and it would use stimulus money. Now is the time to appropriate the funds to decide how much we're going to appropriate. We have a staff report in front of us. Michael uh, McCombo, would you like to take us through the staff report? Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council members. Um, so tonight, staff is looking for um, two approvals. One being the appropriation amount for the Hero Hazard uh, Premium Pay Program for um, the frontline grocers, and the second is for the authorization of the city manager to um, pr uh, provide or implement policies and procedures to administer the program. A snapshot of where we're at now, um, as the, the mayor was mentioning, um, on May 26, the council um, reached a consensus on the uh, a few different items um, one being the program eligibility for stores the program eligibility for workers and the method in which the hero payment would be calculated um, getting a little bit into that method on the top of page two of the staff report um, council directed staff to accumulate all of the hours for each eligible worker over the course of a year from march 2020 to march 2021 and um, divide that by the number of weeks to come to a um, average weekly um, hours worked. When each employee had that average weekly hours worked, they would then be placed into a one of the strata or, or the categories, if you will. So from um, if the, an employee on average worked 31 to 40 hours per week during that uh, year timeframe, they would receive 100% or a full hero payment. If they worked 21 to 30 hours, they would receive 75%. Um, and, and so on and so forth. So where we're at now is um, trying to determine both the not to exceed appropriation amount, as well as the individual full hero payments. I've, I've listed a few different options on the staff report. Uh, well, four different options. These are not exhaustive. Um, They're simply for reference and, and really arbitrary. Um, we, I have a spreadsheet up uh, where I'm able to provide um, instant feedback if, for instance, someone uh, there was a motion to, um, you know, make the payment three hundred dollars or six hundred dollars or five hundred and twenty dollars in in X amount of cents, right? So I guess the point I'm trying to say is these aren't the only four options, and um, staff has the flexibility to um, provide, um, you know, a, a additional numbers and calculations based on the council's desires, and. I'm available um, okay. to answer. And, yep. I, I just, I see Mary Sue's hand up. I, I really want to get to the public, but if you have questions. I do. I did not see a PowerPoint or a slideshow with the different options. All right. Also, your voice is fading out. I didn't see a slideshow. Did I, am I, was my screen not? No, no, I don't, I don't have, I don't have a slideshow. Um, just for brevity, it's, it's on the staff report, the, the four different well, the options. The public needs to see what you're talking about. So. Can you put up those? Um, sure. Give me one second. So Are you talking about the four charts, the four, the graph. four bar graphs? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, public. Um, just so you know, we're going to take public comment, and then the council is going to deliberate. Now, last time, there was a person, unfortunately, who I I asked way into the conversation after we were done to speak and I sadly could not let that person do so. So um, I'm gonna give you a couple different warnings, but 
Now is the time to raise your hand. I see two hands up. And I'll give you a couple other warnings too. So uh, Michael, do you have, what are you putting up, Michael? So I'm uh, going to be presenting or, or showing uh, the four different options that are presented um, as recommendations at this point. Again, they, they are arbitrary and we can um, change these as, I, as requested. As an aside, I would ask when we, you know, when we report to the federal government, I wanna make sure we use the term hazard pay and there, and there is a legal reason for that. And I don't want it because otherwise, if they come back to us, and it's unlikely, but if they say that's not, Euro pay isn't covered, it's coming out of the general fund. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, we'll, we'll be sure to um, make and sure- that's the language we will adopt. Very good. So, okay. Um, is that up now in full? Yeah, so, so this is option one. Um, what, what this means, I'm going to see if I can. Well, option option one here is for two hundred fifty dollars. Now, what does that mean? That means for someone that worked at least thirty one to forty hours, or maybe what we consider full time, they would receive a full hero payment of two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, furthermore, seventy five percent time they receive one hundred and eighty eight, fifty percent, one hundred twenty five, twenty five percent, sixty three dollars. Right. So these these are. Um, these are all pegged uh, to the corresponding column. Uh, this orange column or salmon colored column is the number of hero payments. So um, the number of eligible employees total is 454. Um, if we chose option one, 176 would receive $250. 147 employees would receive 188. And, and again, so on and so forth. And then the final column, the green one, is the total hero payment dollar amount, right? Or, or as um, what part of the appropriation or total budget um, is applied to that type of payment. So again, 250, 44,000 would be spent on specifically $250 for 176 employees and so on and so forth. Um, so very briefly, option one is for $250, the full hero payment. Um, that total appropriation amount comes to $83,609 or 83,609. Moving to option two, if we were to set the full hero payment at $500, um, that appropriation amount, the number of payments don't change, um, but the appropriation amount does, it changes to $167,000. Moving on to option three, for a $750 um, full hero payment, that changes the appropriation to, to about $250,000. And then moving to option four, for $1,000, that changes the appropriation for uh, to three hundred thirty-four thousand dollars. Again, these are just these are um, arbitrary in some degree. And if there's numbers besides these four that the council would like to see, uh, I'd be happy to present that as well. Okay. Yeah, there might be questions of that. Um, okay. But then we're going to start with the public comment. When you come into the room, please state your name, city of residence, or organization you represent, or if you work here, just where you work just something, and uh, we'll have three minutes or less. A staff cannot answer your questions directly, but they can answer them at the end. So we'll start with Matthew Plotkin. And now I cannot see anything, okay. Matthew. Unmute. Hi, are we here? Yes. Okay, fantastic. All right, uh, my name's Matt. I live in Sherman Oaks. I work for Gelson's in Calabasas. I'm sorry, I'm going to talk a little fast because I have three minutes and I apologize if I repeat myself. I am a little nervous. Um, uh, quickly, I would like to thank the council for considering hero pay. Obviously, I would rather prefer that you create an ordinance that requires uh, businesses to raise wages. Um, however, I am grateful that you are considering any option and am thankful. Uh, I consider option four to be the best option. Actually, I take that back. Option five, in which you give every grocery worker $2,000 for their sacrifice during this crisis would be the best option. Uh, but in absence of that, I would take um, option four. 
what I would like to spend the rest of my time talking about is uh, the correspondence received item one, which is this beautiful email from Kyla Bockwell to the city of Calabasas, in which this young 17 year old uh, expresses her mental struggles, anxiety, uncertainties about uh, what she went through during this crisis and what she feels she deserves as a worker. And yeah, I totally understand. Maybe she was a little salty at the end of the email. You know, we were all 17. I think we all had a little slip of the tongue. Maybe we shouldn't have used the word insulting. Maybe we shouldn't have asked to return the $63, but we were all 17 once. We all got into a little trouble. Maybe we said something we shouldn't have, but the gist of this was an experience that she went through as a minor bagging groceries during this crisis. Now, four of the council members decided to take this correspondence and just kind of sit on it and wait for the meeting and just kind of hang out and chew on it. But one member decided to take 11 minutes and respond to her. And I would like to read that response in its entirety for the record uh, with uh, already receiving permission from her mother to make this statement. So I'm going to begin. This is from the mayor of Calabasas, James, uh, to Kyla, sent at 1.47 p.m., 11 minutes after her email. <clears throat> Quote, thank you for the email message. I am not sure what the city council will be doing tonight, as that will be a group decision. But please keep in mind that whatever we decide to give you and the other grocery workers is a gift from the city and not an obligation by any means. So I am perplexed as to how any reasonable person could be, quote, insulted by a voluntary gift of funds. The overwhelming majority of California's 482 cities opted to give nothing. Very few are giving a thousand. Were we to average out what other cities are doing, parentheses, which I am not proposing to do here, unparentheses, you would probably receive around 50 to 100 by my own rough estimates. When I brought forward to the council the idea of providing our workers with a bonus. It was not with the idea of any single amount of money in mind. Again, nothing is required here. So if you're insulted by the amount the council settles upon, whatever that may be, please let us know and we will distribute your payment to other workers who will hopefully show more gratitude and respect for the generosity we're about to bestow. So instead of using this as a coachable moment, instead of saying this is civic leaders acknowledging that society suddenly asked essential workers to do way more at a much higher risk, give them no choice in the matter, we use the word gift twice. Instead of comparing to our surrounding communities, we, we compare ourselves to places in Bakerfield and Fresno that exploit migrant workers in a road middle class viability instead of cities like L.A. County, L.A. City, Long Beach, West Hollywood and Oxnard surrounding communities that have enacted hero pay, essential worker bonuses and ordinances as such. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Sloan and there's no last name. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for hearing us out and thank you for putting this on the agenda again. My name is Sloan Balkwell and I am here to speak on behalf of my fellow employees at Gelson's Calabasas. Please know that in our attempts to give our opinions, which have been asked for, did we never intend to seem ungrateful? They are our opinions and we are passionate about them and what we have been through this past year. No one, not even 17 year old baggers voicing their honest and heartfelt opinions take for granted the fact that the city chose to use their stimulus funds as opposed to making the companies do it themselves as other cities have. With that being said, assuming you value our input, we feel that option four is the most fair and comparable to other cities. Please keep in mind that we have all sacrificed the same. We have had and still have the same fear, anxiety, and stress. Whether we are a 17-year-old part-time bagger who has had no protection at all and was more exposed than anyone else, or a full-time checker, clerk, or manager. We all sacrificed our health and well-being, and still are. The virus is not gone. You can still get it, regardless of vaccination status. My coworker lost her uncle to COVID after he was vaccinated. We are still at risk. Please keep that in mind. I beg you. 
and continue, we continue to serve this community without question. Thank you for your time and thank you for your effort. Thank you. Next will be Jill Whitney. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jill Whitney. I'm a union representative for Local 770 for the past 11 years. I'm speaking to you tonight to thank you for considering these workers receiving hero pay, or should I say hazard pay, because working during this pandemic since the beginning has been very hazardous to the physical and mental health of these essential workers. They have been here for the community since the day, since day one, providing much needed food and medicine with the rest of the world was shut down. They work all the holidays so that we can celebrate with our families and friends. Every day I receive numerous calls from workers explaining their fear of working, knowing that they have to go to work, but then having to go home to their loved ones. I believe we should show them much, how much we appreciate them. These essential workers endured some of the highest rates of infection due to the high volume of customers. Literally, in some cases, isolation themselves in their own home, depending on who they shared their home with, like grandparents, elderly parents, and even their young children. With that being said, I thank you, and I believe our essential workers deserve option four, a sum of $1,000 in hero pay across the board. These workers have been committed to work for the past year and now facing the new Delta variant, um, which is spreading rapidly. They are putting their own health on the line for the sake of our community. Thank you again, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, next is Jake Dodd. And I'll give another warning that we are nearing the end of public comments. If you're waiting, I have one other person after that. So if you're waiting to lift, lift your hand, we close the public comment, we won't be able to have additional comments. So Jake, are you here? Yes, just unmute yourself, Jake. Hi, um, I live in Calabasas and I work at the Gelson's in Calabasas. And obviously the pandemic was a very, very hard time for all of us. Me personally, I live with uh, elderly grandparents and coming home every day, watching how stressed they were. Uh, it really took a toll on me, especially, you know, I know it's my decision to come to work and I'm grateful that I have a job, but it comes to a certain point where I think we deserve as much money as you guys are willing to give us. Uh, we were here for you guys. Every time you came to the market, we bagged your groceries, we checked you out and we were terrified the entire time. You know, we come home exposing our grandparents, our parents, our cousins, brothers, sisters, it doesn't matter. Um, I do think that we deserve a gift as you guys like to call it, um, I think we just need to be appreciated for the work we did. And that's really about it. Everyone just getting their just due, especially when other Gelson's, not even other grocery stores, other Gelson's are giving their workers uh, $5 extra an hour and they've been giving it since the beginning. So that's about all I have to say about that. I just wanna be appreciated like everybody else that works for Gelson's and other grocery stores. So that's about it, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, final comment is Maria, but I don't have a last name. Maria? Um, can you hear me? My connection is a little yeah. spotty. No, no, it's a good connection. Uh, your first and last name and connect and your city of residence or where you work. Okay, so my name is Maria. I live in Woodland Hills and I work in Gelson's Calabasas. I want to say that I'm very appreciative that you guys are considering giving a hazard pay. And as you may know that the pandemic has impacted everyone's life. Some of us have lost someone through this terrible virus. As Sloan mentioned, I lost my uncle a few, just a little over a month ago, and he was vaccinated. I am vaccinated, my family is vaccinated, but the virus is still out there, attacking and trying to make, and trying to make its way back with force. It's scary to think that we might go back to those months when everything was locked up. I was there, I was working the front lines, with the risk of bringing back the virus to my elderly parents who are both cancer survivors. I worked overtime to keep the store stocked with the when high demand of items. I put my life at risk multiple times. I was verbally abused by customers who did not want to wear their masks or believe I was condescending just for asking them to wear their masks properly. I didn't deserve that. No one deserved that. 
I am not asking the council to feel sorry for me. I am asking the council to be able to recognize the effort I made and my coworkers made. We all put our lives at risk to serve the community and to serve you. So for that matter, I dare to say that option four is the fairest option to us in behalf of myself and all my coworkers. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, okay, final call for public comment. I see no other hands. Uh, Mari, did anyone call in and raise your hand through that method? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, then. No other hands either. No other hands, I'm closing the public comment. Michael, I don't know to the extent there were questions. Do you have any, any answers? I didn't hear any questions specifically, but any comments based on what was said? No, no comments and I didn't hear any questions. Mayor. Matthew, city attorney, anything that you need to say before we start in? No, at this time we provide the previous legal advice, the choices to the council. Thank okay, you. let me start. And first of all, obviously I was the target of the first speaker and that's fine. I've been doing this for a long time. I don't mind taking the criticism. Um, what I do mind is some implication that somehow I'm insensitive to the plight of the workers, which I'm not. My track record speaks for itself. I was involved in the public sector for my career and I was a union board member for 22 years. I was a public sector union president of a very large public sector union, one of the largest for two years. And I have absolutely no doubt that what was said about the way workers are treated based on my own personal experiences is true. And I'm very sympathetic. To imply otherwise is just ignorance of the facts. However, there were many, many, many letters that came in on all parts of this issue over time. Most of them were very thoughtful and respectful. I responded to those that requested a response. There were a couple of letters that were rude and disrespectful, and I responded as I saw fit. And I will continue to do so because I don't think that addressing yourself to the city council when you're asking for something and doing so in a hostile and rude manner should just go unanswered. And others may handle it differently, I do not. So I don't apologize. Now, I'm not taking it out on anybody. In fact, I wanna give credit where it's due. This was Mary Sumauer's idea to, in the first place to agendize this. It was agendized for a discussion. I, I think she supported, I'll let her speak for herself, but I think she more supported the idea of doing an ordinance and I suggested using the stimulus money because fortuitously it came just at the same time. And the council went ahead and decided to agendize this. No one didn't support it. Some of the correspondence we've received makes it seem like we didn't support it. And that's not the case. I'm sorry we didn't do this earlier, in fact. So uh, some of the things that have been said have not been true. Now, as far as the questions I have, Michael, for this, I, I, I'm not very good in math and I'm the first one to admit it. What, it, what if, take us through the options and what would happen if I said, it's too complicated and I wanna give everyone just one lump sum. Like take option two and three, which is what I'm more or less focused on. Yeah, what, so, would be the, what would be the, if everyone just got that lump sum, what would it, what would it be? Instead of 167,000 or instead of 250,000, what, what would we talk, be talking about? Uh, so for option two, uh, if you're saying $500 times the, the 454 employees that are eligible, regardless of how many hours they worked, that, that number then changes to 227,000 on option two. Okay. All right. Um, Here's my thought. I, I discard option one as being insufficient compensation. And I think option four, while it would be a nice idea, is something that we can't afford, not with the amount that we were given. I looked at other cities extensively, the overwhelming majority of which did nothing. Those that used stimulus funds did, were not as generous as this. Oxnard has been touted, but Oxnard has 13 times our population. I looked, they got something like 20 or 25 times our stimulus allocation. So they got more money proportionally than we did. And they spent less proportionally than we're proposing to do on their grocery workers. They also, did we ever find out, Michael, why they have so few grocery workers there? No, no, I didn't. I okay, didn't they have proportionally very few. I found that interesting. So they were able to fund them to a greater extent 
with the greater amount of money they got. And, and Mayor, to, to your point with, because you brought up Oxnard, um, to clarify, part-time workers in Oxnard are receiving prorated uh, amounts. So not, not all okay. grocery workers are receiving $1,000. I, I look at this as a very complicated thing. I would prefer option two. I, I would be considering option three, but, um, and I'll listen to the rest of the council, uh, of course, the actual way I prefer to do this, because I think it's complicated and I think Michael and the staff and the city manager I trust to do a better calculation than we could do justice to here is to allocate $200,000 to this project and let them work within the framework of, of that to do the allocation. That would be a little bit more than option two, it would be somewhere between two and three. And that's what I would suggest to do. A couple other comments before I go to the next council member. I, I wanna make sure, Michael, that we don't lose people. Like I know that there was some talk that we couldn't fund people who had retired. It would be a very big shame in my opinion if someone had worked throughout the pandemic and then they didn't get um, any money because they decided to retire in June and then we allocated this in July or you know something like that. So can we make sure that we don't lose any people along the way? Is there a way to do that? I might lean uh, to the city attorney on this, but the, I believe the purpose of the program was to provide premium payment to active, active employees, right? Um, I'm not sure you can, you can reach terminated employees. See, because the, the, the irony here would be if somebody came in the last few weeks of the pandemic and worked, they would get the pay because they're still working there now. And someone who had a career taking abuse, quite honestly, not just during the pandemic, as a grocery worker and as a frontline worker, because believe me, I'm sure it's not always a pleasure to deal with the customers. And then during the pandemic, they had the additional thing of the hazards of what to what they were exposed to. If they retired last month, they're done. They don't get anything. And I, I think that's wrong. So I would like to at least work on that. Mike, Matthew, do you have an answer to that? So Mayor and Council, the issue is under the stimulus regulations from the Treasury on these federal funds, it has to be current workers. The city could top up the funding for those who are in some defined category of recent retirees using general fund money. But if the goal is to stick with the stimulus funding, it does not account for uh, the situation you've described. It has to be current workers because it's intended to be support going forward, not going back. So the top up could be with general fund money, but if the goal is to stay with the stimulus funding, it would have to be current workers. All right, in that case, my final comment will be, if that's the case, and because there are probably not many of them, but they are probably valuable long-term employees, I would like to do that. However, that's worked out, I don't know. But whatever we do, we have to do tonight, because if we don't do it tonight, we're gonna miss any of the 450 employees who retire in the next month or two. Um, Peter, your hand is raised. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to, uh, to weigh in on this as well. Uh, first of all, I wanna say I am very proud of our city for doing what we're doing. I too was not a fan of telling grocery stores that they have to increase their pay. I think that's a function of what the union uh, should have been at the negotiating table for. And uh, if it's not resolved through them, then I, I didn't see it as the city of Calabasas's place to be telling the grocery union to be increasing their pay. Uh, I do think it's a great use of our stimulus money. Uh, you mentioned the city of Oxnard. The city of Oxnard got over 65 million uh, in stimulus funds and they allocated 2 million for this, which is about 3%. 3% of our 5.7 million would be option two, um, 167,000. So on a percentage basis, if we did option two, we would be in the same line with the percentage that Oxnard is spending. Um, having said that, I would be inclined to move towards option three. I think $250,000 is the number I had in the back of my mind when we had this conversation last time. Uh, so option three is kind of where I'm centering right now as I listen to my other council members. Um, your comment about 
you know, giving a lump sum cost and doing that across the board. We did talk about that last time, and I want to emphasize that somebody who served us through the high and lows of the pandemic, through the difficult times, that was there for 12 months, that was there full time. Uh, in my mind, uh, they did us a much greater service and they deserve that full share. And somebody who perhaps uh, just joined the, the grocery stores in the last month or so and has not got that uh, average number of hours up there, in my mind, does not has not earned the same share that somebody who's been serving us throughout this entire pandemic has. So I'm really excited to see these tables in front of us. Uh, Michael, I think you've done a great job uh, getting the numbers that we thought we weren't going to be able to get. And it looks like you've gotten them all. And I appreciate the hard work. And I would like to follow through with the prorated shares that we have here. Um, as much as I'd like to move to option four, and I hear the comments from everybody in the public here tonight, uh, there were some other things that were brought up tonight um, in our other use of stimulus funds, restaurant and hotel workers, uh, lower income uh, people, residents that have lost their jobs, residents that can't afford meals. We have so many other places to spend the money um, that I just think it's prudent that we, we keep a reasonable amount of money uh, for the rest of our residents and spend a reasonable amount of money here. And that's why I'm behind option three. Okay, any modifications or just that? I think option three, as it's laid out, is uh, just perfect for me. Okay. Alicia, your hand's up next. Sure. Thank you. Um, first, I'm proud of our city that we are bringing this item forward for final consideration. The way I look at this is maybe a little different than my colleagues, but I see that this is this money has been given to the city to provide a benefit to people impacted by COVID-19. And I can't think of really anyone, probably besides like our first responders who served our community more during the last year. I mean, what these workers did day in and day out pre-vaccination really is truly heroic. I mean, they even when people relied on Instacart, the grocery store employees were still there. So they had to keep the market open. So even if you weren't going, they were allowing the Instacart workers to shop for you. So I really think that they deserve this money. We talked about a lot of other uses tonight that we also want to provide support for, but I really think it's important that we take the money that's been given to us. I'm looking at the slide, the deck that Mari sent us, and it really talks about to provide to workers performing essential work during the COVID-19 public health emergency provide by providing premium pay to eligible workers, and it goes on. So I think this is like truly what this money is intended for. And I know that option four is a lot. I'm looking at the difference, but so it's 70, it's, um, wait, what's the difference between 50? It's like $84,000 difference between three and four, right? Can someone check my math? Is that right? Yes. Okay, Peters, thanks. Um, I think we could find the $84,000. I mean, we were given extra money by the government and I know $84,000 is a lot, but I think that, extra $250 is meant to be in the hands of these employees. So I might be in the minority and I understand option three is pretty close, but I think, and now even today, just for example, LA County is now saying people indoors should be wearing masks. That places like extra stress again on the workers because people are so defiant all the way, yelling at these employees, fighting with the manager, the sheriffs have, has had to been called over the last year. I mean, this is not like a normal working environment. And we heard from two um, high school age students and their experiences. And I just think, again, this is how the money was intended for. And yeah, that's where I'm looking. It's, you know, 80 plus thousand dollars, but I think we could find it. And we want our markets to continue opening. This pandemic is not nearly over. As I spoke about in the beginning of the evening, 
you know, we're only at 73% vaccinated for 16 plus. We have this new variant. I think that our employees at our markets um, deserve this. So I would support option four. I know it's a stretch and we'd have to probably work around some other issues, but I do think it's important to show our appreciation. So, okay, thank you. Sue, your hands up. Yes, thank you. Um, I will just pick up where council member Weintraub left off in that this is not the end of the pandemic. Um, these workers are gonna continue serving our community during the next phase, the long pandemic, the next pandemic. And, um, and I'm very grateful. I wanna thank them all, the ones that are attending and the ones that um, have been at the front line. I wanna set the record straight on something I heard. Uh, Mayor Bazajian, I am certain that Oxnard unanimously approved $1,000 to all part-time and full-time. I wasn't- that I don't know. Michael would, did the research. I, I didn't discuss uh, that. Um, I, I, I would ask somebody to look that up because this is important. Oxnard, the city of an Oxnard unanimously approved $1,000 for all full-time and all part-time grocery workers. And not only have they done that, but there have been states that have set the standard of $1,000 per employee. While I, I, I appreciate all the work, Michael, you did and the direction we gave you, but when I saw it come back, I thought, this is so bureaucratic. This is, this is unnecessary. Um, $1,000 for every worker seems to be the standard that cities like us who care and want to do what's right do for the cities. I'm an essential worker. I work for a state emergency response um, agency. I went to work every single day, 10 to 12 hours, came home, managed outbreaks of COVID, got COVID at work. And then there were nights I would come in and barely squeak in before the grocery stores were closed to get my groceries. And I saw these workers exhausted, stocking shelves, continuing the work. We can't, now that things are better, forget what they went through. And we can't take this time and say, we don't have the money. Two weeks ago, we got an additional $1.3 million. Now, Two weeks ago, I might have said, mm, four is a bit of a stretch. $1.3 million. We have the money. Will there be other needs? We'll find other needs, certainly. But this city is pretty well run, is, does not have the needs that the city of Los Angeles or cities in East LA have. But we have workers, grocery workers, and their risk of exposure far exceeds hotel workers or other workers, although I'm happy to entertain that group as well another time. But what I want to put forward, and I really, it sounds like some of you have made up your mind, but, but I ask you to just consider the additional windfall of money that we got and this real need, the biggest need, that council member Weintraub identified these grocery workers. And if we were to give each worker part-time, full-time, 10 hours, 12 hours, one hour apart, $1,000, we're talking about $454,000. That's a third of our windfall that we got. I know it's a lot because I heard you say you won't, don't even want to spend half of that. But I am asking you to do what Calabas Palaces does best, and that is set standards of expectation and, and, and for others to follow. And so with that, I would like to move. Wait, 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 we're not done with comment. Oh, pardon me. I am done with my comments, thank you. Okay, David. 
Thank you. And I listened carefully and read all the correspondence and I appreciate and thank all the workers at all the grocery stores. Uh, many of you know me too well for many, many years in particular. Um, I, I know we've heard a lot on these meetings and the calls from Gelson's in particular. Uh, I haven't heard, unfortunately, other than we've received some correspondence from other stores that, that are impacted and we are considering as well. I would have certainly liked to have heard from other uh, workers in grocery stores and as well. Um, but we do thank them. I thank them tremendously and, and appreciate the hard work and the stress, understandably, that they went through during the past year plus and still continue to deal with. We all do. Uh, originally, I had looked at the recommendation, which is how I viewed it from both our city manager and our CFO, which was based upon the 167,000 total option two. And uh, I, I thought it made some sense financially, uh, being careful, being cautious, yet doing something. Uh, as we went through this, as I looked through it further, I was more inclined towards uh, option three. And I have listened to my colleagues here, and we've, we've also received letters. We've received a letter as recently as today from our wonderful, great state senator, Henry Stern. And I, I'll tell you point blank, I wrote him asking if he would match what we do here today uh, out of one of his available funds, if he has them, to help this cause. Uh, I haven't heard back, and I'm sure he's he does things on a regular basis, but I thought that would be a good idea. Uh, my thought is if we, if we were going with item, let's say table three, as opposed to option four, I wanted to know, and I guess I'm asking our city attorney if it's appropriate, if we could add the difference of the additional, let's say $250 uh, each in city of Calabasas businesses gift cards to make up the amount to equal what we would give in table four. That way we're serving a dual purpose. We're helping our businesses in our city and we're doing something a little more than what is on table three actually amounts to what is on table four. And uh, as a follow-up, if we are not able to do that, I likely would support table four at this point. Those are my thoughts. And the question there was for Matt. a question posed about, I guess it's gonna, I guess he's asking about option three, 750 plus a $250 gift card. For Calabasas so, businesses. Yeah, on the gift card approach, if it's limited to just a portion of the funding and employees are given an opportunity or the recipients are given an opportunity to select from one of several uh, sources for use of those funds, I think that would be viable. Uh, I'm not sure it'd be viable if were it to be all the funding, but I understand the request to be a, a, roughly a quarter of it. I think at that scale, it'd be viable. Why would Thank you. What the amount? Okay. So is that, does that answer the question, David? Yes. And, and that would be my recommendation if, if there is not full support for just going ahead with item four, uh, table four, option four, or something different. Uh, I would recommend option three with the difference between option three and option four coming forward in Calabasas businesses, uh, gift cards, a number of them being an option for each individual worker. So what happens to, so, would you, so it gets prorated down the line? Prorated, yes, okay. prorated. Uh, that's what I didn't understand. Okay. Yes. I got that. So that would mean the same amount of 334, but just allocated differently, 250 plus, I think. Plus 84,000 in uh, gift cards. Okay, I, I got it now. Uh, Alicia, your hand was up. Yes, just a question to David, or maybe not David, maybe staff, whoever wants to answer. Um, how would you, what would happen? The employee would have to say, I want a 250 gift card to Rite Aid or I want a $250 gift card to like, well, I'm afraid that would be like an administrative nightmare. No, we had, us. we had already set something up just, you know, kind of 
conceptually where we'd offer a list of some type. So, Mayor, everything. council members, if I could weigh in on that, we explored that in, in several different options. Um, and again, we love the idea of infusing the, the, the funds back into our community. What we found was difficult is even with a Rite Aid or a Gelson's or a Tahoe, uh, whatever it is, a uh, Grouse, there's no guarantee that it's spent in Calabasas. And so that, that was one of the difficulty of that. And then also just overall administering it um, becomes much more complicated for staff uh, to allocate these funds. So th those were some of the complications we were dealing with. Michael, I interrupted you on that as well. Yeah, and, and to add to that, maybe Matt can speak on this. Um, the, the funds, the premium pay is supposed to be issued in the same manner that the other uses are for, and, and it really a grant, right? So I'm not sure we could apply conditions on where they can spend the money. Um, I, I thought we went down that as well, and maybe I'll it, it can't be required to be spent in Calabasas. A portion of it could be provided in gift cards that work in Calabasas, but I think it would have to be a pretty broad range of options, Gelson's, Rite Aid, et cetera. I don't think it could be solely a restaurant that exists only in Calabasas. I think that would run afoul of, of the federal requirements. We wouldn't want to result in the money being pulled back a year from now if the feds look at it too closely. David? Thanks, then I will just go ahead and say I support at this point directly option uh, table four. All right, well, three council members Thank support some version of option four. Mary Sue, I, I don't know that there's any support for going beyond that, but you can certainly ask because you were no one answered the question directly. I, I, I don't want to support more than that. That's already a huge amount and it's more than sufficient in my opinion. It's much more than Oxnard gave proportionally as has been pointed out. I don't know of another city that gave that much um, of its own stimulus money. I honestly, I'm, and I looked at it, if there is one out there, perhaps there is, but I don't know any. Do you wanna move it? Move. I can't, the problem is I can't, you're fading out. Did you, what did you say? I, I, I was going to say, I'll make a motion, but then um, Councilmember member Weintraub uh, had something to say. Okay. No, 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 I asked if you wanted to make the motion because I couldn't hear you. I'm, can you hear me okay now? Oh, yeah, but it fades in and out. So just I, stay I, it. Yes. Yeah, so right while the iron's hot. I move um, to approve option number four. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, then Mari, you can call the roll. Councilmember Kraut? Yes. Councilmember Shapiro? Yes. Councilmember Weintraub? Yes. Mayor Potemauer? Yes. Mayor Bosaja? Aye. Carries 5 0, Mr. Mayor. Okay, it's 5 0. Will that, that will Up. be, well, I'm sorry? Up. Option four. I was going to say option four. Yes, option four. Okay, thank you for all your hard work on this, Michael. We really appreciate it. I know it was very difficult to assemble all of this and keep the, keep the statistics in mind and the ever changing landscape of what's going on out there, including the change in the amount of stimulus funding. So uh, moving right along, task force reports. Any task force reports? David? Real briefly, I did attend the Valley Economic Alliance board meeting. I wanted to confirm the sale of the building of which Valley Economic Alliance was a uh, small partner. And you had asked last time, James, about where they were moving to. At this point, the board and Valley Economic Alliance are still looking at potentially uh, releasing the same space or smaller space in the same building. Otherwise, there are alternatives that'll come up at the next meeting. Okay. Um, any other task force reports? Okay, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have anything else to report tonight. Request for future agenda items? Nothing? Okay, you can submit them before August and we'll put them on there. I did have one that I had discussed uh, before, which was um, I would like in time for hopefully the first meeting in August, it may even be a closed session, um, a memorandum from the city attorney regarding strategy 
involving SB9 and SB10 and how cities can work with or around or whatever those, those bills, because I assume they will probably become law. And I don't want to get caught flat-footed if our ordinances are not in, um, in place and if we don't have proper protections for our various communities. So there's nothing, no one has anything that you want for August yet? That's fine. All right. Um, then um, one final thing, um, I just want to tell the council that, um, and, the, and the community will be getting more information on this, but I will be, uh, we will be hosting the League of California Cities LA County Division meeting here, the annual installation dinner here on August 5th. It is open to the public, but it is $50 uh, to attend. It's a dinner and I will be installed as um, president of the league for the coming year. And so uh, we'll invite the community, anyone who wants to attend um, and you'll be getting further information along with an invitation very shortly. Um, so with that, with no further business, it's 9.09 PM and we will adjourn. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.